Mr. Zamora, when was the first time you heard about Los Alamos? You were a very young boy when Los Alamos started. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was about a year before. This was 1943 that I was in Los Alamos. And uh, I heard that uh, they were building something at Los Alamos and people from uh, northern New Mexico were being hired. Uh, at the time I was in, actually I, I heard most of it in Albuquerque. I just happened to come back to Mora for a few days and, uh, and I heard about it and I heard that they were employing. So I came to Santa Fe and applied and was hired. You were interviewed in Santa Fe? Yes, I don't think the interview was that long. And uh, I, I don't remember any real session where you might say it was an investigation or, or it was just I uh, gave them my background. I had just finished um, ninth grade at uh, Sacred Heart School in Albuquerque and was going back to Mora. I had stayed with my sister for two or three years. And somehow or other, I got to Santa Fe and I applied for a job, whatever it might have been. And uh, a few days later, it wasn't long, I know, a few days later, I uh, reported to the famous 109 East Palace. And uh, from there, transported to Los Alamos. How did you come to Los Alamos? By bus or vehicle? No, it was, uh, I could be mistaken about this, but it was something like a station wagon, station those wagon. old station wagons with a... Driven by the military? I don't remember. But it was, uh, it had a side, remember those uh, wooden panels that were on the side? And um, I think there were two other persons in it, and we were just driven to Los Alamos at the time, as I remember, um, past Ottawa Bridge. It was uh, just either dirt road or the road was under construction. And that hill was a, a little scary going up. <laughs> and you were assigned to work at the lodge right away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you remember any of your co-workers? I can re uh, remember of only one, that's amazing. And they were uh, young boys also. Oh yeah, they were, we were all teenagers. Uh, his name was uh, Leo Roybal from Pohuaque, and uh, I later, later represented him. I f then became an attorney in time. And uh, uh, I saw him a few times. He died about four or five years ago. There was another young man from Mora, the first name was Manuel, but I don't remember his last name. On this picture, does this bring back any memories? Not really, because that was... Uh, that Fuller Lodge. That was yeah, that's Fuller, Fuller Lodge, Lodge, and right adjacent to it were some cabins, and that's where we stayed. And uh, our, for some reason, we were, I don't think we were forcibly restricted, but most of our, we worked there. I remember going around the, the uh, walking around Ashley Pond, and uh, uh, there wasn't much activity. Of course, we, we started at 6.30, and we had breaks during the day and probably ended about 7.30 at night working. What did you do for recreation? Or was there any time for recreation? I don't think there was time for recreation. I don't remember. I remember going to the PX and uh, we used to get, uh, you know, comics and things like that. And, uh, and, uh, and candy, I guess. But uh, I don't remember anything of recreation except our walking around the park or just taking a, a short walk. It was never a long walk. Everything was, seemed to be, as I remember, it seemed to be enclosed by barbed wire.
And what about movies? Did they have movies for the soldiers that you can remember? I don't remember going to a movie, no. Did you go home on weekends? No. no. I, I, I don't know why, but I, I, uh, I went to uh, Española once, and that was quite an experience. Uh, there was a, a, a carnival, in, uh, and we were invited by somebody who had a car, and we got there, and then he left us there. <laughs> and we had, we, there was very little traffic on the backside, you know, on the back road to Los Alamos. So we uh, uh, hitchhiked to uh, Pohuaque and ended up walking from Pohuaque to, to Los Alamos. It was, we got here about five o'clock in the morning, I think. Six thirty, we were back at work. There were two of us. Just for the tape, <clears throat> how far is it from Pawaki to Los Alamos when you walk? What would you say, twelve miles? Pawaki, more like sixteen. Sixteen miles. Yeah, it was a long walk, and uh, the traffic, very little traffic, and as I remember, all of it was military, but uh, and. Uh, I know that when we got to, in that paper I described a, 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 a gray shack where uh, it was the only way in for uh, foot traffic into, into the area. And uh, I remember we were required to take off everything and then we were checked in. But we had our identity. Well, I had badge or whatever identification was necessary. What, uh, which of the scientists do you remember serving while you were the server there at the lodge? Uh, let me, uh, I remember uh, uh, Oppenheimer, okay. and uh, because of size, later on I saw pictures, and because of size, I think. One another one was Fermi, and because of the hair, I think I think Teller was there. And uh, am I mistaken? It was General Groves, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I remember General Groves. And um, there were, as I described them in that paper, there were three or four tables. There were, it wasn't a, any big place. And it was family style. You just put the food in the middle, and they served themselves. And uh, there were, as I remember, four tables. One was almost totally military, and the others were were civilians. Uh, most of them elderly. I don't remember any young uh, persons there, but there could have been. And uh, there was a police, uh, a military policeman at one end of the table and another one at the other. It was amazing. And uh, there w wasn't very much conversation with us. And of course, at age 16, I, I just had no idea what was happening. I knew it was something important because they looked impressive. And, uh, but uh, I didn't know what was being built or anything. Did they discuss a lot of, uh, among themselves, could you hear a lot of well, shop talk, you might say? Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, the, as I remember, I don't remember them discussing anything scientific. I guess they were uh, prohibited from doing that. Most of it was uh, they laughed and joked and, and things like that. But. Uh, I don't remember them having a piece of paper and writing something, or that, that just didn't occur. They were all very polite, and uh, even Teller. <laughs> <laughs> if that was Teller. Yeah. So how many, uh, you worked there for a short time there at the, at yeah, the just, lodge? Yeah, just for the summer, just for the for summer, summer yeah. yeah. 
Do you remember any of the other people that worked there at the lodge? I mean, some of the supervisors are... Uh, the, I remember, uh, um, I mentioned his name in the paper, uh, Sam Davalos. Oh, yeah, Sam Davalos. Sam Davalos was a young lieutenant, uh, and uh, he, was, he had one of the rooms uh, in the lodge on the second floor. And our job was, uh, as I said, started about 6.30 in the morning, and uh, we, I don't remember if we served breakfast, but we must have. And then after that, uh, we were required to clean up uh, the kitchen, everything. There were no dishwashers then, so you had to wash everything by hand. And then we uh, cleaned the lodge and the rooms. And as I said, I, Sam Davalos had a, a beautiful pair of boots and I used to shine the boot for him. Afterwards, when he'd introduce me, he'd introduce me as the man that used to shine my boots. <laughs> Do you remember a lady that worked there at the lodge by the last name of Luhan? No. Okay. There weren't any, any women when I was at there. At that time? When you, that yeah, was at very the, early that time, early, no. I think the... the uh, lady in charge, really directly in charge, uh, was uh, Mrs. Barker, but I'm not sure. I know it starts with a B. Okay, after you finished your, your employment at Los Alamos, did you go back to high school? Yeah, I went back to, to Albuquerque. And uh, then you went to the military. Yeah. And you finished high school in Albuquerque? No, I didn't finish high school. I, I was, uh, because of illness, I was a, a year behind. And so I went into the military uh, after my the 11th grade. And uh, I, I finished uh, my high school. You finished, okay. Did you get a GED test? Well, yeah. GED, GED. Yeah. And uh, after the GED test, that enabled you to go into law school? Uh, well, first of all, while in the service, I, I uh, attended, uh, uh, for some reason, I, I took a, uh, a uh, test. I can't remember what they call the test, but. Uh, and I say that it was because of the nuns in, uh, in Mora, the Sisters of Loreto. And uh, they taught us uh, grammar very well. And uh, I think that that helped me to, to score very high on uh, language uh, tests. And so in the service, I ended up uh, in German school, being fluent in German, and then being fluent in Russian. And so when I left the service, I went to Highlands University, and I think I'm the only one that has sort of a minor in Russian for Highlands University. After you finished Highlands, uh, finished at Highlands, you went to what law school? To Georgetown Law Georgetown. School in Washington. And you practiced with law in Santa Fe for how many years? For about thirty-six years. Thirty-six years. And how many of your children are lawyers? Uh, Diego, Monica, Eugene, and I. Yeah, three. Three lawyers. Do you consider your stay at Los Alamos to be very formative in your career? Oh, sure. The, the need for discipline and the military. I, I suppose so. I, I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. I know I enjoyed my stay in Los Alamos. 
and uh, experience. yeah, it was a it was a good experience. Do you have any questions? What were your um, so uh, you were at Los Alamos the entire time during the Manhattan Project in the summer? No, the just for a period, period of three months. Three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was your uh, what were your feelings? I was, I had finished basic training at F Fort Hood and I had volunteered for the paratroopers and uh, I was just waiting uh, in, at Fort Hood for orders to report to Fort Bennings, Georgia and uh, we were kind of impatient, there were about four of us that were supposed to go to, to Fort Bennings and the orders wouldn't come, the orders wouldn't come, we just spent our time reading and going to eat and all that, and one day the, we heard about the bomb, and that's the first time, and of course, it was said that it was developed in Los Alamos, and I thought, God, those men that I served were <laughs> the ones that were creating it, building it. Did you feel some relief to know that you weren't going to have to go parachute? Oh, yeah, Japan. yeah, yeah. You know, the, the battle for Japan, was, I, I didn't, we knew that probably at 40% wouldn't come back, you know, those were the estimates at the time. But it was amazing how, how the, the patriotism that existed, we were all gung-ho to, to go. <laughs> young and brainwashed oh. and ready to go. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, there was no. Yes. Uh, did you have any thoughts about that and, the, and, uh, and uh, sort of the bomb being maybe payback time? Uh, and, and, and no, I don't think I had thoughts about that. I had a first cousin who went through the march and uh, survived, came back. But I, it was before, uh, I didn't see him before I, I went in the service. And... Uh, I had a brother who was at Pearl Harbor, and uh, but uh, n n there were no reservations. I mean, you were in the service, and you were going to do what you had to do. And that uh, there's a kind of an irony that uh, that these poor guys in the Bataan Death March, but the, uh, the, and the Japanese made them suffer so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. They were so ill prepared to go in. It was amazing. Well, my cousin used to tell me that they they used brooms to march instead of weapons. And uh, I later on uh, got to know and represented General Sage, who was one of the prisoners of war. <laughs>